Shall we begin with a, with a word of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We love to tell our stories. I love to tell my story today. Lord, it is your grace and mercy that saved me and deliver us from all the darkness of this world to a marvelous light. How joyful it is may be a sweet savor to you, be acceptable and pleasing to you, but also nourishment and encouragement of us and to battle this, uh, this thing and keep going. Of your wonderful story in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So when Rob told me uh, to to give a testimony, I said, "Wow, what a what a wonderful privilege!" So I had to. So I'm sorry, I had to prepare. I have to write it down. So I usually do that. And uh, so um, I'm an engineer by trade. So I don't have spectaculars or dramas or, or uh, Pentecostals or. Um, uh, you know, all this fancy stuff. My story is a plain, old, plain story. I'm a boring guy, basically, in general. <laughs> I know very little about feelings and uh, emotions. I really cannot understand. But I'm very rigorous trained in logic and reason and critical reasoning. That is my strength, and that is my story. My story is just as, as miraculous, as spectacular as those big ones. I have a little one here, but it's just as as, as sweet and, and, and uh, nourishing to us, I hope. Because I think it's just as powerful as, as the Lord's mercy upon me to save a wretch like me, just as powerful it is as those uh, those you know, charismatic stories or some big events in, in life. But, you know, his salvation never left me along these journeys and look back, as I look back. And I cannot just say enough to praise him and give this testimony so you can learn that where I, where I came from, and how we can encourage other in, in through his word. It began in the 60s, actually, in the, in the 60s, um, that's before I was born. And uh, the, there were three Princeton brothers here near, nearby in New Jersey, and they were attending the, the university. They attended the Princeton Evangelical Fellowship. And their names are Bob, Van, and Jim. And Bob is engineering major. After graduation, he went to Ohio starting his campus uh, uh, ministry, a missionary uh, uh, work. Then his physics major, he had gone on to, to the full-blown uh, uh, Divinity School of Harvard and uh, the South Dallas Seminary and all the other schools, uh, the, the accolades of schools. And But the Lord came up to him and said he, he, he wanted to follow the New Testament pattern. And he started his, his own church, his own church in his basement of his house in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And uh, uh, Jim is a history major, but he's also a piano, uh, a, a piano concert pian pianist. And after graduation, he went back to his hometown in Philadelphia uh, um, uh, to become a pastor of a small church in, in Baltimore Pike. <laughs> the reason I mention these locations, because you'll see later on, it has, it has to be strategic. Yeah, uh, it is very strategic to me through my process. So let's go in 10 year increments from 60s, 70s, these guys went to school. 80s, they, they started a ministry. And in the mid 80s, uh, Bob introduced uh, a Chinese student from Ohio and he referred it to, uh, he's interested in, his, uh, in, the, in the Bible. So he said, well, he's transferred to, uh, to the University of Michigan. So why don't you, why don't I introduce you to your, my friend Ben in Ann Arbor so you can continue uh, in, 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 in to attend the church over there. And soon that person graduated and he left. So end of the story, isn't it? But but he met a, a, a interesting um, lady, and her name is Ga. And later on, she became my sister-in-law. And uh, he before he left, he brought her to the church at the at the house church at the uh, uh, at the Vans church. So so Ga started to attend the, attending the church, and that's just ten years increments. And she graduated. She's not interested. And end of the story, right? Well, before he gradu she graduated, she has two sisters. She, has, so she brought the two sisters to, to, the, to the church. And the two sisters continue to study and while attending, uh, attending the, uh, the church. So now it's the 90s. So the two sisters graduated and they went back. They went back to, uh, to Beijing where they came from. And um, that sounds like that's also end of the end of the road. But uh, there's one guy he had a, she had a, a romantic feeling with. That was me. So I, we actually, she came back and I was just a student uh, beginning. This is in the nineties and we got married and uh, uh, I started to attend the church. And soon I graduated too. So, you know, this, 
the schools are like, it's like, you know, you call it you know, like a conveyor belt because there's all the people coming through and then uh, keep going. And uh, of course, uh, Van, his wife, Anita, and the church are very patient with us. Every time they explain to us what the Bible is, and I came from very strong, you know, a scientific background, so to speak. <laughs> And they were very patient in explaining the gospel to me, but you know, I'm not interested. So I graduated too. So I left. We left. Okay, we left Ann Arbor. But I said, I mentioned those, those locations are very important. These three brothers, one from Ohio to, to Michigan, and then one in Philadelphia, because after graduation, I went to Philadelphia and to continue my studies. Then somehow I just landed. We just landed. We live right near the Baltimore Pike where, uh, uh, in Upper Derby. Uh, where James uh, Churchill said. So Van said, hey, you're going to Philadelphia. Why don't you connect with me, uh, my, my, my classmate, Jim? So I started to attend the ones in, 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 uh, in Philly. Where are my biggest holdouts? I love those people. I, they're my friends. They're genuine. They're sincere. They're very trustworthy. They have great credentials and obviously much smarter than me in many cases. But I have my holdouts. Actually, nothing to do with the gospel. And it's actually to do with my own. I have... Two holders. One is that I'm a decent person. I'm self-righteous. You know, I kind of, yeah, I'm, okay. I'm doing okay. I didn't do anything too bad in my life. As I said, I don't have many dramas in my, in my whole life. And I don't look for any, by the way. I don't look for that either. So one holdout is like, hey, I'm a pretty decent person. Two, I enjoy the freedom, the freedom of choice, the freedom I can pick and choose, slide, slide one way or the other, because the morality is relative. Is 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 you know you can you can adjust as you go. That's the freedom I want. I don't want to give up. While Christianity talks about you know you have to you know give up all your self righteousness and repent, and that is the hardest thing for in that moment to very uh, very pride of me. So if you look at Isaiah chapter one verse eighteen, this is says this is what the Lord says: Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Thou your sins be as scarlet. They shall be as white as snow. Though they may be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. That struck to my heart. I said, hey, I really, am I really that good? Am I really that good? Can I really satisfy the, 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 uh, the requirements? And in the meantime, these people are very, very, very kind to me. They've been to my weddings. The graduation, dissertation, parties, and all that. We, we love each other. We, we really enjoy so much each other as a company. And, uh, um, and uh, I love their principles. I really see through them. I see their lifestyle. That's something I want. They're very different from me, obviously. I mean, we don't have any <laughs> similarity in terms of, you know, for example, food or preferences. Or it's very, we're very different. But I like that principle. I like what the principle that guides them that I cannot get. From you know, uh, from my self righteousness, and especially uh, I also this is funny. I like the King King James Bible, believe it or not, a foreign guy, okay, completely foreign, not very good English speaker, not English, the native. I love the, the King James Bible purely for the literary the literary beauty, the beauty of literature. It is the top of the line, you know, three hundred years ago, or four 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 hundred years ago. So the King's commissioned the best, the top of the Harvards and and the Yales. Uh, wrote those, those uh, read the book. So I, I love that. I love the hymnals. I love the old, you know, uh, traditional music. I like. I go. I go through all these motions. I you know attend the church. When they pass this, uh, when they breaking the bread, I have to pass it pass it through. That stirs up a huge controversy in in, in, uh, in my heart. He said, "What I'm doing? I've been do going to this church every Sunday. You know, dressed up, going there, going through the motions for a few years." I felt like I'm a guy like in the grocery store sampling the food every <laughs> Saturday, every Sunday. Never bought one. I have always uh, 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 sampling, right? I, I say the nice things. I, I debate with them. I, I, I reason with them. But deep in my heart, I say I, I got to, I either have to either completely go in or completely check out. Because what if I got caught? If I got caught and he really, if God is really uh, holy and he's, he's, he's really this, he going to clamp down on my hypocrisy. And I'm, I don't want to mess, on, mess around with these are spiritual matters. I do not mess with, you know, I, I, even by my own little little reasoning. So I made I made a decision and said, hey, do I really want to continue and continue to be a church goer, a seer, so to speak, in, in, uh, 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 in, in, in the Old Testament, a uh, seeker, or, uh, or I really want to you know, be completely checked out and just, just, no, I don't want to go 
uh, there anymore because I can't sit there anymore every every week pretending to be one of them and while well, not being uh, uh, the real person, the real uh, believer. So really, it is by God's grace. I don't, as I, said, I don't have dramas or anything, you know, miraculous, you know, uh, uh, life event or something. You know, I, I just, just going, life is going normal. And uh, uh, I said, okay, I, I need to, I need to believe. I just need to believe. I just woke up one day and said, Lord, I repent and accept. Uh, the hardest part is not about creation and all that. The hardest part is the, I, I'm a sinner. That is the most difficult part. For my, uh, uh, for me to come into uh, to Christ and uh, the need of salvation, not the necessary, the mechanism of uh, of salva salvation. So in 1998, uh, I, you know, we we went back for the graduation. Uh, my wife and I we went back to the graduation, the commencement ceremony, and there we were baptized. That was a year. Also, Michigan won the national championship <laughs> and the Heisman Trophy. And Tom Brady was was the uh, second uh, second string quarterback. He was not even the starter. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good good year. So praise the Lord! I was saved in that miraculous year, <laughs> without any kind of headaches or issues, and uh, uh, um, or any kind of uh, uh, dramatic events. Of course, life is not easy. It's not we're not rich or anything by any measure, but we're content. We're really content most of the time. And uh, so, so, so here I am, 25 years, fast forward 25 years now, standing in front of you. It is really a miracle I can speak here uh, and, uh, and and share my, my journey with you. Because these 25 years, again, as I don't have I don't have many uh, dramas in life, and uh, I try to keep it that way. Uh, and uh, uh, I have really started from a uh, from a, a New Testament church, a house church, and gone through the entire cycle of I call it a commercial grade uh, uh, yeah, Christianity that I went through. We lived in six places, so we moved from different places. And uh, this is my number seven churches. So almost one one church per per city we have, uh, per location we have lived. We, you know, roaming around the country, you know, hopping from job to job and things like that. And our kids growing up. And uh, so, so let's say in 98, uh, we we got it right. We got the gospel. We got the salvation. In 2023, I asked myself, "What have I done with it? What kind of what what have what have I learned? What I have I done with the with the gospel with the grace that he that he, he bestowed upon us?" And um, so so I kind of I I kind of uh, crystallized, so to speak, and condensed into the verse of the second uh, the first Corinthians uh, chapter. Um, uh, chapter uh, Second Corinthians, chapter one, verse twelve. For our rejoicing is this, Paul says, that the testimony of our conscience, that is in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with flesh fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we had our conversation in the Word, and more important, abundantly to you, Word. The simplicity and the godly sincerity, that's the one that's etched in my mind. If you ask me what I have learned these 25 years, these are the things I've learned in 25 years. In simple and sincere manner that we serve him. We, we as I said, I've been to many, I've been to 5,000 member churches you know, in Minneapolis. We were living in Minneapolis. The pastor is extremely charismatic. You can imagine, we have a full symphony. We have a, not even a little, little uh, band here. We have an entire, entire symphony that has whole, all, the, you know, all the instruments. It's, it was grand, but it was a sad story. Unfortunately, that pastor was well, 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 criticizing Bill Clinton's Lewinsky uh, uh, affair. If, if some of you are old enough to remember that, he actually had his own affair with the secretary, and later on he resigned. So anyways, <laughs> I don't want to hear to, 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 to go back on the negative side, but what I crystallize these two, I think I see it's good and sweet that I can share with you. That in simplicity and sincerity we serve the Lord. That's what I have learned. That's what I want to use. I want to use it for, and that's what I can, I can put some use into that. So, so how do I how do I look at in, in a simplistic way? How do we look at it in a simplistic way and in sincerity, uh, sincerity towards the gospel and to, to the teachings of uh, the Scripture, and especially our sanctified life, our Christian life is not say I cannot be say twenty five years. Oh yeah, Hallelujah! I got it. I got the message, but I have not done anything with it. I still live my own my own ways. Uh, I still practice my old uh, my old self. 
No, we have to live in a sanctified life. A sanctified life, sanctified means holy or, or, or um, uh, uh, purified or consecrated. These are similar meanings. It means just basically means saints, the meaning used by God. This is a, this is a t- sanctified piano because it's not Billy Joe. It doesn't play on this. It's played for this particular purpose, dedicated for the service of the Lord. Okay, it, it's different from the other uh, uh, other pianos in the world. So the sanctified life. How do we sanctify our lives? Yeah, you know, uh, as a believer. So I know some of you are much you know, much more mature than me. Some of them are younger and 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 they're just coming coming up uh, uh, into this. So I I would like to share a few uh, a few aspects of the sanctification through simplicity and sincerity. First of all, obviously, is the sanctify through the word of God. I believe the plain, common sense, no no raw, not season, not adding with salt and pepper, raw. Uh, interpretation of, of of the scripture. Do not add human twist in that. Doesn't mean that we, we don't read uh, literature or history. I mean, that's all wonderful. We should do that. It's very important. But don't add to the scripture. Uh, a very interesting observation I had is many times when the when the when the teacher wants to add something, it always goes with it's like we need to look at this in context. Oh, it was uh, it was addressing Paul was addressing to the Corinthians. So therefore, today, things are a little bit different now. So therefore, those may not apply. That is a, a human addition, right? That's an additional twist that we're adding. But I believe it's a simplistic, plain interpretation of the Bible, even though the Bible, what the Bible re- reveals to us is, is could be totally dynamic. The John says, uh, you know, even the whole holy earth becomes the book. You won't be able to, to, to write down what Jesus had and his disciples had witnessed it. And I can venture to tell you a, a, a fun story about uh, 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 about adding principles. So we know that today the Earth is not the center. Of the, the the stars are not not circling around the Earth. It's the other way around. We circle around the sun. But Ptolemy, yeah, the, the Egyptian uh, astronomer, established the so-called geocentric model that's lasts for fifteen hundred years. That he says, oh, the, everything is circling around uh, the Earth. Obviously, today you may say that's crazy. <laughs> it actually works. Actually, it actually works. How? Okay, the, the, everything, the sun and the, the, the Venus and all that. So, uh, well, it doesn't fit the data because the Venus kind of go to score the uh, pedal pedal patterns. You kind of come in like a ricochet, for the, uh, uh, kind of you kind of come like like coming around the Earth and then kind of you know swim back every year. So, so how do you explain that? Well, there there's the there's the catch is that. Yes, if you assume everything circles around the Earth, but also on top of that, you add another called an epicenter circles. That is, Venus is also circling an imaginary, some kind of a secondary circle. If you if you, he's spinning around both circles, you actually make the you can fit the data until you add about four hundred some circles. You can explain the entire the solar system how it, how it moves and all the patterns will fit. So called geocentric uh, 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 theory. Obviously, this is a debunked theory. Obviously, this is today he looks foolish to say where the Earth, uh, everything is circle around the Earth, but that shows the pattern that we're adding or uh, altering the principle and adding human factors into this. And in 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 science, you want to do so called out- outcomes razor. You want to reduce it to the fewest assumptions as possible. The heliocentric system, which is everything circles around the sun, is only one one per, one per, uh, principle. Everything circles around the sun. That's it. You only need one circle. You don't need four hundred some uh, some circles. That is usually the truth. Same goes with the with the scripture. It's revelation to us. It is in, infinite. It's it's ever changing. It's dynamic. It's it's a uh, but the principles don't. We do not twist or add on that. So sanctify through the word of God. And secondly, sanctify in creation. Uh, this is actually very important today, especially in today's. And uh, you know, I have read the, the gap theory, theory, the epoch, the myst, myst, uh, myst, uh, mysticisms, the metaphoric uh, representation of the book of Genesis. A lot of them, actually, a lot of very prominent uh, Christians have, 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 have wrote about, try to reconcile the so-called uh, secular $13.5 billion universe uh, 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 history with the Genesis seven days, uh, uh, six days of creation. And uh, well, that has a lot of trouble, uh, I can explain. And so Genesis, forget about all that. Genesis is a historical book. It is a historical book. You said, you said, oh, how how come how is how why is this so important? I'll tell you one example is very important today. 
the reason that the, uh, the everybody attacks on Israel right now is because they think Genesis is a, is, a, is a book that's written by the Jews, so therefore they can justify. It's a narrative. It's a, it's a mystical a, a narrative. So therefore they can justify the establishment of Jews in the Canaan. That's, that's, that's why. Uh, so if we let go, if we let go, say, oh, actually it was a 13.5, 13.6 uh, billion years, which actually they've been recently really debunked by the, by the James Webb uh, uh, telescope. And um, if we give in the first three pages of the Bible, we may just as well give up the whole thing. And basically, you, you have no credibility whatsoever. Is, does, does Noah really landed the, the ark in, in, in Turkey, right? Basically, in, in today's Turkey? Does, uh, uh, you know, one family goes in and then there's about 600,000 coming out of uh, uh, Egypt, right? One family, Israel, uh, came, came, uh, came in. And then the 400 years later, the Moses led about 600,000 guys out of, out of it. Is that really happening? You start to question all this, everything will fall apart because. We, are, we need to honor, we need to honor and sanctify it in creation. Because we're sad, we're creating in, in six days and, and, and so on and so forth. And we can uh, talk at length about the details of that. What I'm saying is that we don't play games and, uh, and try to twist it, try to fit the modern, so-called modern science. Modern science is not contradictory to the, to, uh, to the scripture. And uh, the third one to sanctify is the humanity part of it. Uh, um, you know, uh, we have our families and uh, you know, our children growing up, and uh, we have we are influencing their worldview uh, and how we treat uh, humans against uh, an, uh, like the animals and uh, the plants. We are we're created by the, in the image of God. We are special. We have have dominion over the earth. We need to manage this earth. Well. We need to protect the environment while managing the world, uh, managing the the the. Uh, this uh, this earth he gave us is is very uh, is very precious, but most important, our human life is, is extremely precious, right? The Psalms uh, Psalms uh, Psalmist says in one thirty nine, "For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb." So before I was even created, he covered me. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your uh, thy works, and that my soul knows uh, right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth, God formed each one of us at the time of conception. So going back to the engineering mind, you cannot logically reconcile, say, hey, if this one is born, I want this baby, and it is my future, my love, you know, and family, uh, God, you know, love this little kid, he will be you know, a wonderful, you know, a human being, maybe someday you will be uh, the president of something or whatever. But if I don't want it, it is something else. You can't logically, it doesn't make sense. Does it make sense? Does, can, you, can you see that? How can you, your mind, our mind, decide that at what stage this baby is a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, human being? And the other stage is, if I don't want it, then therefore it means a sample, an experimental sample in a lab or something. That's one. Same goes with gender. Gender is the same. We know that uh, the chromosome deter determines our, uh, uh, our male and female. And you can, no matter how you're going to do surgeries, you cannot change the chromosome. Because that's, that's in every, every cell. You cannot unplug every one of them and refresh it with a new one. So again, our mind cannot decide the gender. It's not because I think I am, I am so therefore I, be, I am who I am. It's because it is objectivity, right? It is the same with, uh, this is against the ultimate materialistic teachings we've been brought, brought up to. But we can decide our human mind, our feelings and observations decide what actually things actually are. So the rest, the, the, in retrospect, the, sancti the sancti sanctification in humanity is important in, 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 in my Christian faith. I cannot choose, I really cannot choose I may disobey. I have done bad things. You know, I have I have done. You know, but I cannot say to uh, let's just let's uh, let's find a scripture that can kind of twist it and I can get by because I can think this way. Uh, that's uh, that's one aspect. Uh, obviously, the sanctification of marriage is important. I have heard so many uh, the, uh, presentations, sermons, discussions about you know is there a way we can? There is a provision. Is there any provision of, of uh, divorce and remarriage? And uh, this, oh, again, going back to the simplistic view, don't even go there. Don't even go there. Because that's something we cannot guarantee that it be justified. Most, most likely, it's not justifiable. And especially on the remarriage part. Because we, when we start to justify the divorce, we start to say, oh, if I can divorce because 
there's this reasons, and then it's okay for me to remarry. And that's that's a that's a path, a rabbit hole we don't want to go down to. Because Malachi, in Malachi, uh, book of Malachi uh, 2, 2, 2.15, the Lord says that, uh, 2.16, for the Lord, the God of Israel, says that he hates putting away. For one covers violence with his garment, says the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously, uh, the treacherous against the wife of your of, of your youth. It's very clear that the Lord does not want us to, you know, to separate. He wants us to be one together, regardless of the circumstances. I'm sure we're, we're trying to come up with all kinds of circumstances, trying to justify one way, one way or another. I would say 99.9 .9 of us are normal. We're just normal people. You don't, we don't qualify. There's any kind of uh, special circumstance, except for that we just are our, our own nature. And uh, so, so in creation, in word, in relationships, in humanity, and lastly, in our lives, in our lives, we sanctify it in our lives. And our body is a temple of the Lord. So we need to keep, keep, keep it clean, a clean vessel, well kept, like uh, Ramos' car, shiny, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah, perfect. We try to be uh, uh, keep uh, our body uh, free of all those pollutions, and uh, um, and uh, we we are living sacrifice offered up to the Lord. And uh, to maintain this, we have to have a, a, a not always holy, but try to be a holy, a used by God, a, a, a dedicated, a dedicated service to Him. And we not, should not be drifted away by the worldliness uh, uh, of this, uh, uh, the worldliness we were, were seeing and the lust that, 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 that took us away from that. The lust of uh, the eye, the lust of the, the pride of the heart, and obviously our motivation for profit. So uh, I used to use this verse a lot. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So 25 years ago, I, I believe, good, that's a good start. To me, that's the, uh, I can tell you now I'm sharing with you, that's just the beginning. <laughs> There's a whole process of working out. Faith is important, but work is also just as important. We will work out our, our salvation through fear and trembling. And that I have learned over time. At the beginning, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't so good. I wasn't so, uh, so mature. So Romans 10, 5 says, so Moses described the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which does those sins shall live by them. We cannot just talk the talk. We got to walk the walk. When rubber meets the road, we actually have to do our conduct uh, worthy of his salvation. So what I'm saying here is that <clears throat> is that these 25 years I've learned all these things through my own mistakes and, and stumbles and, uh, and and errors, and uh, and and also by God's grace. I kind of little by little, I kind of gravitationally kind of you know, <laughs> settled down here. I've gone through the 25 years of you know, uh, uh, a mainline church, so to speak, mainline Christianity. This uh, last Christmas, I was here, uh, as I remember, it was a beautiful Christmas day. And this March, I started to come into the chapel here because I find a group of sincere and genuine guys and girls and, 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 and a, a body of, of real believers and try to mimic what the not even the reform the reform it didn't even reform. <laughs> he just he's just trying to dial back some of the of the bit, but he hasn't done, gone all the way back. He still maintained the priest the uh, hierarchy, the you know, there's some other ordinances and, and and all that. But I find a genuine a, a group of believers that's kind of fit my taste, so to speak. But most of it's the sweetest one in the Lord that I can have fellowship, I can you know, uh, contribute and help out. And yeah, also be held accountable, and and uh, 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 and you can encourage me as well. We can encourage other as we can you know, battle this, you know, battle this this, uh, uh, this group forward, and uh, to do his uh, to do his will. So, so in summary, my testimony is that there's, I said I don't have dramatic events or something like uh, you know, spectacular, but every bit of it it is not easy, but it's actually quite good. I say with great confidence. That from a, a, a from a person that didn't grow up in this country, didn't have a, 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 all the all the uh, um, necessities or uh, or the provisions we have here. For example, having a piano here that's very rare to me when I grow up. Even my mother, uh, my father was a was a musician. That we don't we don't have a piano. Yeah. Uh, the whole campus have maybe have one one piano, so to speak. 
And uh, um, so I would I would really uh, venture to say that life in America is actually quite good. It's quite easy. It's not that it's not that too difficult. I'm sure many of you who are first generation here share similar. Uh, it's a land of, of milk and honey. But the but the things we learn, how quickly we can pick up <laughs> the bad stuff here, it's it's amazing. <laughs> it is it is it is uh, I, 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 it's hard for me to describe how much bad stuff we can we can pick up very rapidly. So so faith to me, my testimony to the Lord and and to in front of you and uh, my own salvation, my struggles and the headaches and all that, he serves this for his good pleasure, for his purposes that. Actually, he showed me that we do not need uh, 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 spectacular events, that he's just as powerful in every detail of our, our life. And that's much much more uh, important and meaningful than we do this so-called daily grind in our jobs, in our schools, families. I mean, life, is, it is a daily grind. It's just the same, same old uh, 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 time, but it refreshes and regenerates our spirit that we can produce something that's good and positive, both at work, which is the the, the favor have favor having favor with men, and uh, uh, in spiritual realms in in the, in the gospel we we can have favor with the Lord. So therefore, I I want to be a nobler a nobler Christian, not a nominal one. I used to be a nominal one. You know what the nominal? I just say this good thing. I check out. You know, Sunday I've done this. You know, sometimes I even book my travels while the sermon was <laughs> was landing. Uh, okay, uh, taking orders or something like that. Uh, a nominal Christian is actually not in, not truly vested. It's not truly vested. It's not, when you're truly vested, it shows the word, the, the the fruit by the fruit you can tell uh, the tree. Uh, and uh, and uh, um, so I want to be a, 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 a try to be a try. I want to be uh, work towards being a noble, a noble Christian with simplicity and sincerity, with a fellowship with the uh, brothers and sisters here. And so therefore, when I look back, when I say, hey, I converted, I converted in, in 98, 97, 98. And now I live by it. I live by it. So that is my testimony. And I can, uh, 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 my aspiration here is that, uh, you know, now I'm, you know, you know definitely over the hump on, on the Middle Ages and all that. And uh, I want, I have this uh, aspiration to share with, especially with the younger that you're coming through the uh, going through the 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 new life, new family, new kid, new business, uh, you know, all these motions. Maybe I can share with you some of the things I learned along the way. That could be of value to, or could be of reference to you. That I feel very, very, uh, a great uh, uh, satisfaction because I always ask the question because I need to report out at the end of the day, right? So, what have we done? What have I done? But the the, the grace that you give us. And uh, uh, to me, you know, in, in 25 years ago. So the journey continues, and I'm here, and I'm thankful that for the support they have given me to my me and and, and my family. And uh, the game is on. Now, now, never be over. We'll keep keep going on, and uh, until he comes back. So let us pray, shall we? Dear Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for your mercies and your grace. And each one of us, obviously, have a, have a different life story. Each one is so uniquely and wonderfully made. But you just care each one of us, even the nine, leaving the 99 to pick up the one that's lost. I was one that was the one that's lost. But you, your, your mercy fell upon me. And I just pray that you know, mighty works through Bethany here and through our fellowship, our elders and, and our brothers and sisters, that we have a group of, of, of vibrant faith that will live out your truth and show it among the, uh, to the word uh, how good the Lord God is and how wonderful you have made us. And we can be your children, your people, until you come again. In Christ's name we ask. Amen. Amen.